Hey, welcome back to another RC Words video. Today we're going to be talking about the importance of a check valve or having a check valve in your submersible well. Uh, it is extremely important to protect one particular component, so let's find out more. <music> So you might be surprised to know that uh, the, pe the critical piece of equipment that the uh, check valves actually protect, or more or less actually a component of the equipment is, so we've got a submersible motor here and you, you can hopefully see that we've got a shaft here that sticks up out of the motor. And when you put the pump on, that goes into the pump coupling. So interestingly enough, um, if this experiences any strong forces or sudden forces, it could potentially break because it's just a simple um, keyed shaft, or not a keyed shaft, but it's got uh, splines on it. So those splines definitely can take away some of the strength of the shaft if, uh, if something happens that shouldn't happen. All right, so what we have here is a check valve. And what you use the check valve for, basically, most of you probably already know, is it's a one-way valve that uh, allows the water only to go one direction. And there's a little, uh, let me grab this other one, it's a little bigger, easier to see. So you've got a stopper in here, and on uh, water well check valves, it's spring-loaded, so you can actually stick your hand in there and feel that even if you open it, it's going to spring closed. So you might be wondering, okay, so I understand what a check valve does, it uh, prevents backflow and so forth, but how does that actually protect the shaft of my motor? And what it does is, if the water were to flow in reverse, you could get yourself into a situation where the pump starts rotating in reverse and what will happen is if suddenly the pump decides to turn on during that backward spinning it'll start trying to spin the other direction and you can get a severe amount of force one thing's trying to go this way the other thing's trying to go that way and uh, you can have a broken shaft now actually if you look down in the description either during this video go ahead and pause it or after the video we're going to put a link to a really cool document that was published by franklin electric that shows some of the damage that you can actually have uh, happen to your shaft whether it be uh, from backspin or um, up thrust so there's a variety of conditions that can actually cause extreme shaft wear so it's a cool document check it out so there's three main issues that can arise from not having enough check valves or not having check valves at all. And those would be backspin, up thrust, as well as water hammer. So backspin is when, like I just described, it spins backwards, tries to start, and boom, your shaft is broken. Up thrust typically occurs when you have the impellers floating up inside of the pump. So you've got a low pressure area and a high pressure area, so the impellers naturally gravitate upwards and then start rubbing on the diffusers causing tons of pump wear which is also bad uh, shaft wear is arguably worse because um, shafts aren't intended to take that kind of wear a lot of pumps are designed to handle it so anyways i won't get off on a tangent on that uh, and finally water hammer so water hammer is when you have a, a lot of water moving one direction that hits water that isn't moving at all and it can cause that energy to transfer from the water that's moving to the water that's not moving and like a lightning bolt it can blow out pipes or make really loud noises as pipes in your house bang against the wall and it can also negatively impact the bearings inside of the pump motor so all those things combined can make the decision of having check valves a no-brainer so how many check valves are recommended to have in a well? Well, usually every manufacturer kind of has their own opinion, and I've heard numbers from 100 to 200 feet or you know whatever you might see out there, but I just use the general rule of thumb about every 150 feet, and you're gonna be more than covered. The important thing is, uh, to put a check valve within the first 25 feet or so of the pump and then stagger them out from there every 150, 100, 200 feet um, as you see fit to protect the system. And the reason that you want to have one relatively close to the pump is again that water hammer and the negative impact of the um, thrust or the water hammer on the thrust bearings. So having that check valve close adds a, a secondary layer of redundancy because oftentimes your pumps are going to have a check valve built into the top of the pump, but that one is in most cases not the highest quality check valve, uh, especially if you're buying a product like what we sell, Flowmatic check valves. Um, so 
you add another one for redundancy and that way you're protected. Because obviously when you go to install a well pump, you want it to last for 10, 20 years and you don't want to worry about it. So cheap components are never going to pay off. Um, so anyways, that is the importance of why you want to have a check valve as well as some of, the, some of the things that can actually happen if you don't have either the correct amount of check valves or too few check valves, I guess is more likely, um, or you just opt to not use check valves at all. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. We'll catch you next time.